We are almost ready to get it underway here at Watkins Glen and the Cheese at 355. You know, there's just so many more aspects that come into play when you race on a road course. For 90 laps, you have to be perfect. You can't make a mistake when you're shifting, when you're braking, when you're accelerating. Good luck today, bud. See if you can't get up there and finagle your way to a win. Good 40 cars come to life in front of a sold-out crowd. For 90 laps here at Watkins Glen International, the American Ethanol green flag is in the air. They are underway. Right from the very first lap, I, I took to the new pavement, and I don't take to new pavement at all. You basically start from scratch. I mean, you have some notes from past years, but at the end of the day, strategy, uh, tire fall off, setups, they all go out the window when you pave a track. They are flaring out two and three wide up the back straightaway. Here they come now to the entrance to the inner loop. And Tony Stewart overshoots the inner loop. He's got to come to a complete stop in the runoff area, refire the car, move away, but he'll lose a half a dozen spots, maybe even more in the process. The car I'm watching right now is Denny Hamlin. I think the car's okay, but it's slow getting going. For the S's as well, I'm struggling. I'm struggling all together now. Just takes a little while for that FedEx Toyota to come up to speed. When they repaint the racetrack, they raise those rumble strips. And what we're hearing from the garage and some of the teams is that the more you run over those rumble strips and the more you scrape the undercarriage of that race car over top of those rumble strips, you run the risk of splitter damage. You run the risk of other damage underneath the race car, which could totally end your day. I heard guys talking about how slick it was, but with this tire, you just have to kind of stay within the grip zone at all times. You can't slip it because it, it starts to pick up a chatter, but I think they did a great job paving it. There's so many more opportunities to make a mistake and therefore so many more opportunities to make a pass. You know, once we get strung out here, I mean, it, you know, these are the best drivers in the world. They don't make a whole lot of mistakes. And uh, so it, it'll go green for a while and really until someone's car's Breaks. Now there's big trouble further back. Several cars collected. A melee, 15 cars maybe out of the, and I can't see right now. There's so much dust and so much smoke. First half of the race was pretty calm because I think everybody was buying their time, making do, because they know at the end of the day it comes down to trap position in the last segment. First half of this race was so clean, and suddenly now, as we go into the second half, it's breaking out. We knew it was coming. Uh, we were hoping it would come on a lap where, you know, it was a window for us. It wasn't, we stayed, and uh, we pitted later on, which was our final stop. Sold out crowd here at the Glen, and they are about to be entertained. Just make sure we good, good restart, really work your tires here. Yep, I got them. Here they come now, slowly making their way. So I was restarting third, and I actually got a really good restart on the two, uh, enough to where I was able to stay close to him and always and kind of put him in a, in a guard position, you know, whether he was looking in his mirror or at Kyle. Kyle made a deep run into the corner. Green is in the air. Brad Keselowski trying to get away. Here comes Kyle Busch, though. He will rock it to the outside of Brad. Kyle Busch trying to do it the long way around. Oh, he locked up the brakes. He goes way off over the top. The two then made a lunge into the corner as well. Keselowski now goes wide. Denny Hamlin underneath him to take the lead. I knew that I'd reached my braking zone and that there was no way that those two cars were going to come out of that corner running the line that they were supposed to run. And uh, really, when I saw those two slide up the racetrack, I knew it was a great opportunity for me to capitalize. Denny Hamlin to the top of the hill in turn four. Six car lengths up on Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. is indeed closing in on race leader Denny Hamlin as they come out of the carousel and up the short straightaway to turn number six, a hard 90 degree left hand turn. Denny Hamlin by a car length and a half. And the caution flag is out yet again. The eighth time lap, 83, another big one. Boy, you gotta believe everybody's gonna try to get a great jump on the other driver. Let's find out how it goes. You know, I really wasn't thinking about the final restart. I was thinking, Really, to get through turn one, um, if I got through turn one with the lead, I knew I would have a great shot. It is a three-man free-for-all for the lead and the win in Watkins Glen. Denny Hamlin, the race leader, by a car length over Martin Truex Jr., drives it in deep. Chris, our main spotter, uh, told me when I crossed the, the line for the white, do not look in the mirror. Uh, that's what cost us at Sonoma was looking in the mirror, and so uh, I didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Denny Hamlin was spotter up at Sonoma earlier this year. He wins today at Watkins Glen International. Hey! Let's go!